Welcome to Our Voices on the Yard, where Black artistic excellence meets everyday life. I'm your host, Denise Woods. Join me as we explore and celebrate the achievements of the Black artists that attended conservatories and fine arts programs from around the world, starting with my alma mater, the Juilliard School. Giving voice to the truth is all that we have. And it's the most powerful thing we have as artists. I've always taught myself that I'm at the bottom. Mm. There's nowhere else to go but what, Denise? Uh, up. I'm just telling the story of our Juilliard, the Black experience, because it hasn't been told. This is Our Voices on the Yard. Hi, I'm Denise Woods. A lot of you know me, some of you don't, but after you see this podcast or hear this podcast, you will know me. This is Our Voices on the Yard. Let's begin with the first person who I feel an affinity for. Her name is Lisa Gay Hamilton. <laughs> I smile because Lisa Gay Hamilton is that soul, that spirit that when she walks in a room, she changes the energy of the room. She's so authentic. She's so committed to excellence. She's so committed to cultural viability and, and, and cultural awareness. Lisa Gay did, produced, directed a wonderful documentary about a soldier, Hollywood theater veteran by the name of Bea Richards. And she'll talk about that in, in our interview. She'll talk about her time at, at Juilliard. She'll talk about her time in life after Juilliard. I was in the eighth graduating class of Juilliard. Liz Gay was group 18. So she was 10 years after me, but every time I see Lisa Gay Hamilton, she is that cousin, that sister, that friend who will always be family. So enjoy. Welcome to my friend, my family, Lisa Gay Hamilton. Welcome. Welcome to my guest. Lisa Gay Hamilton, welcome to Our Voices on the Yard. Oh, thank you. I'm so proud of you for doing this. Oh, sweetheart, I am so happy to have you. This is, first of all, this is sisterhood. This is real sisterhood mm -hmm. because there's so much that I just found out about you uh, in doing research for this that I was so grateful to know about and go, oh, that's why we're so connected. Because mm -hmm. there really are wonderful connections. Mm -hmm. And as the more we talk, the more we'll find out what those connections are. But first, welcome everyone. Mm -hmm. Welcome the folks to the yard. Let's start with your graduating from Juilliard. We know that we called Juilliard the yard mm -hmm. back in the day. And so we'll start with you graduating from Juilliard and then we'll come back and talk about your experience at Juilliard and how you got there because you went to NYU before you came to Juilliard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But let's talk, let's just do a deep dive into what it was like upon graduation and the transition of going out into the real world with these now tools that you had in your toolkit as, as an actor. What was that like? I was petrified because it's like, what are you doing now? Oh, I also know why I was petrified because we did league auditions at the time. Did you do league auditions? Yes, we did. So, we didn't have a showcase. Did you have a showcase? Did well, you do a showcase? It turns out that my year was the first year that the league dissembled. And so there had to be sort of this creativity of, of putting together. And so it was Juilliard, Yale, and NYU. Wow. And that was it. Wow. And they weren't even called league auditions anymore. Right. I don't even know what they're called now. I think they're called presentations or something. Mm. I don't even know what they're called. Erda or something. I don't know. Yeah. What yeah. they're called now. Okay. And 
at the time, I don't know how you did it, but you did your you did your scenes, mm -hmm. and then in the room, it might have been even three hundred one, were um, eight by eleven pieces of paper, written handwritten of the different agencies. Right, William Morris, and blah 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 blah. I see him, and da da da. And if your name was under, so you would so afterwards you would run into the room and see if your name was on any of the pieces of paper, and my name was not on one piece of paper. Okay, not one. Not one. Okay. Oof. Okay. And so, I wasn't surprised. I think there, there's there. There was all, first of all, I was the only black in my class. That's number one. Okay, so say that again. I was the only black in my class. We came in with two, and they cut Dwight. And they ended up cutting Dwight. Wow. So it was just me. So what year did they cut Dwight? In second, the second year? Yeah, the, where, the, where, the, where, the, where, where they the used acts, to. Where they the used acts to usually fall. Right. In the second year. Right. And so from third year, fourth year, you were the only. Right. Okay. Wow. Right. That's huge. And, yeah. <laughs> okay. But you know what? I think it's interesting. I I look back and I think, who was that person? She was so fearless. <laughs> <laughs> How did she do all those things? I have no idea who that person was. And things Ooh, didn't seem to phase me. Mm. I didn't cry. I wasn't. And everyone came to me, I'm so sorry. And all them, you know, white children, like, get away from my face. I, <laughs> Whatever. You're going to ICM, whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about that. Just, I don't know how you got in, but okay, fine. They want you. Um, and I got a call from two agencies. Oh. And one was called S-T-E, Tex Beha, I remember her. And the other was Brett Adams. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was petrified, and because I didn't have my name on any of the sheets, I didn't know what I was going to do. And Joanne Kilgore, who yes. is group mm, 15, no. Was she your first there, year when you were fourth year? Just the other way, older. Oh, she's, oh, you were first year when she was perhaps third or fourth year. Yes. Okay. And I remember Joanne said, you must be a substitute teacher. You have to have something to fall back on. <laughs> but you must become a substitute teacher. You go take that test. And I took that test. I did too. I have to tell you. <laughs> because it wasn't jo Joanne Kilgore who told me. It was my mother. Who said, you go go take that test. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're going to be a substitute teacher. <laughs> I was Joanne. Yes. She, she scared the shit out of me. Yeah. You're going to go do that. I'm like, okay, that's what I'll go do. That's what I'll go do. And um, I never ended up doing it. Yeah. Because I got to be a spear carrier in Twelfth Night in the Park. The first summer out of school? Yeah. Well, I ended up being a substitute teacher because I did not get uh, the, that's why I wanted to start here because you seemingly worked pretty consistently when you came out of school because I didn't and a lot of us back in, you know, and, and just a little backstory here, I'm 10 years older. <laughs> Well, I'm not 10 years older than, than Lisa no, Day. No, because girlfriend but, looks good, obviously. But thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but because you, I came straight out of high school to Juilliard, mm. and you did four years at NYU before you came to Juilliard. So that narrows the gap just a little bit. I am older, but... No, but, but I think does... the, age, the age in which you graduate, yes. I think, has an impact. Absolutely. I... That's the reason I'm doing, I'm doing the show, because depending on the era, depending on the who was the head of the drama division mm -hmm. or who was the head of the dance division, it really can, or who was your teacher if you were a musician, it determines your experience at the Juilliard School. And so this is very interesting. So continue, I didn't want to cut you I off. I cannot think of her name. She was a casting director at The Public. I know who, Rose, Rosemary Tischler. There we go, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so Rosemary, taught uh, audition class or it could have been for I don't think it was for film but it was just an audition class sure. and um, I did very well there mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think those of us who did very well got into the park I really believe that it's beautiful I, 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 that's wonderful there's no other reason and so it. you were a spear carrier I was a spear carrier yeah, I was you were in the park I was in the park and I was probably in the, the most yes at the mm -hmm. Delacorte uh, 
summertime, right? Mm -hmm. And I was probably at the time in the most star-studded production that ever existed. Okay. We had Michelle Pfeiffer. What? Her first play ever. <laughs> play. <laughs> Privilege. <laughs> so <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer, Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, Gregory Hines, what? John Amos, Jeff Goldblum. Oh. Um, Oh, what's that man's name? I can't think of the man's name. Is this Much Ado About Nothing? No, this is Twelfth Night. Oh, even better. And Jeff Goldblum basically played Malvolio as the fly. Oh. <laughs> so when he came down, but what was what was amazing was that all of us who were spirit cares came from Juilliard and NYU sure. and, and, right, and Yale. And we were all livid. Just livid. Because it was like a rock concert. And we kept thinking, but they're not even doing iambic pentameter. They're not even, I don't understand. Why are you cheering for them? <laughs> Where's the text? Oh, and you also, not... you also, um, and I understudied her. Um, Charlene Woodard was in it. Oh, Charlene. I adore Charlene and Woodard. thank God she never got sick because I never studied Miranda. I, I could barely get through the rehearsals. <laughs> so Twelfth Night, you mean Mariah. I mean, sorry, Mariah. Yeah, Mariah, yeah, Mariah, yeah. Mariah, oh, Mariah. she was Mariah. Oh, gosh, that's wonderful. Who was Sir, who was Sir Toby Belch? That was John. John Amos? And Gregory Hines. Was who? He could have done anything. He <laughs> was the, you know, the fool, the... Um, bottom? No. Was he Bottom? Was he one of the... Oh, no. That's, um, that's a Midsummer Night's Dream. Right, no. Oh, wait, wait, who... Oh, uh, yes, Festy. Yes. Yes, of course. Okay, that makes sense. That and, makes total sense. And Gregory's sense. just yummy. Yeah. So sad about, I just. I know. He was a brilliant, brilliant. Artist. But the play yeah. was a mess because somebody who um, should not have been directing was directing. Okay. And I want to And say, especially when you uh, have actors, film actors, who for the most part, this is their first time doing a play, let alone Shakespeare. You need a seasoned well-seasoned director too and it was and, and of course i'm you know being facetious but i'm sure that it was fun and mm. whatnot and i was i was I, I i don't think i recognized how cool it was because i was you know i stood around you know <laughs> and, and held a spear you know and whatever um but where i really 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 wanted to go to school was yale really and? i had i i had this thing in my head about lloyd richards yeah. I just had this thing, and I just thought I just got to be with him. Which you then got to work with Lloyd. Well, that eventually. was interesting because yeah. right out of school after Twelfth Night, I got Grace in the piano lesson. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was that like? And 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 to work with the Lloyd Richards and was August Wilson in the rehearsal room. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, but you yeah. know what? I Grace was a, it's a very very tiny little sweet little role, and um, and I come in you know, at the end of the play just about. Um, was this the was this the world premiere? Yes. See, I <laughs> missed like I think Sharon Washington played Grace. Oh, I think um, uh, 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 I think Ross Coleman played Grace. So there were some Yale women who preceded me, of Got course. You. And so when I when the when the when the next roundabout came, it was we performed at the Kennedy Center, the Doolittle when it used to be something mm -hmm. here in LA, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, Broadway. Mm. And so that was one of the most that's they're those highlights of my life. Of course, that's a highlight not because I was on Broadway, but because I got to watch that company. Okay, who was who was in the company oh by the time God. you got there? Essie Patham Merkerson. Oh. Mm. Okay. Rock Dutton. Yes. Rocky Carroll. Mm. Tommy Hollis. Mm. Lou Myers. Lou. I've worked with Lou. Lou. Mm. Did, I, did I name everybody? I think I named everybody. Yeah. I said Tommy. Yes. Right. Yeah, that was it. And I forget the little girl's name. But it was And this such is an right out of school. This is right out of school. What impact did that have on you, hon? To and see? So, but then, okay, 
what impact did that have on you? But to be able to work in a play about an experience that you know, to be able to work on a a, 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 a character that comes from the black experience, the African-American experience, which I'm sure you had limited opportunities to work on when you were at Juilliard. But it didn't, I, it's so funny. I didn't, it, that didn't cross, that, it, yeah. it didn't cross my mind wow. because I was home. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was with that company and I, and I really mm -hmm. was a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was the new kid on the block. This is a company that had already been together, mm -hmm. um, had already toured together, had done, you know, Yale already. Well, actually, um, Sam Jackson played uh, Boy Willie. That's right. At, um, at Yale Rep first. Um, so, all I know is I was just trying to keep up with everybody. Yes. Just, just keep up with everybody. And I watched the show every night. And to that, see that it, seems like grad that, school. That's that, grad school. But it was. Yeah. I mean, I think I cried every night when I saw them do Berta Berta. I just, mm. it was just such a well-oiled machine. And, um, but I missed all of the politics and all of the stuff because I just, I wasn't in it. So I feel like I worked with Lloyd, but I didn't work with Lloyd. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because it was a really tiny, tiny role. And but mm -hmm. I do one of my one of my experiences with Lloyd was um, we were at the Kennedy Center and I came up with this audible something that wasn't in the script. OK. And I think I like went, an audible gasp or a, just like a, when I a when, the, when the ghost was there or something, I went, "Ooh, something's not right here. And of course, it got loud. So every night I just milked that shit. <laughs> and we were in notes. Uh oh. And Lloyd said, don't you ever do your play you do my play wow and i you didn't tell me what it was right and exactly what it was and he said don't you do that wow you do the play i directed wow. and i remember crying afterwards and rocky said that's okay but you understood right and i went uh-huh <laughs> i yeah. understood yeah wow but i loved that yes i mean it just it was like hey yeah Lesson learned. Hey, yeah, no question. And from Lloyd Richards. And from Lloyd Richards, and 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 knew it well, and carried that with me. Oh, I got goosebumps. And so when I got to do the play play uh, uh, the O'Neill Eugene O'Neill Playwrights Workshop, sure. Um, that's where, and in the rehearsals of the piano lesson, those experiences were Lloyd were just. Tremendous, because mm, mm. he was Buddha. Yes, and he was a dramaturg like nobody's business. Wow, he could edit, he could get to the you know we would all after the you know read throughs at at the at the O'Neill there would be a a discussion. With sure, the, with the, I remember. With, yes, right, but it would be Buddha who had the very last thing to say, mm. and everyone after he spoke just went. Oh, he just took all that and just wrapped it up and just gave it to you in the bow and explained what the play was about and what needed to happen. And, and I was just like, oh, God. Mm -hmm. I've, had, I've had an experience like that, not with a Buddha, but with a phenomenal actress in a rehearsal process. And it's Audra McDonald. Mm -hmm. I was coaching Gershwin's um, uh, Porgy and Bess that was mm -hmm. on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And it was in the rehearsal hall. And the director had all of the actors do an improv backstory about mm. their characters. Mm -hmm. And everybody came up and did their improv just to just to kind of go through a day in the life of the character. Mm -hmm. Baby, when Miss Audrey McDonald finished her day in the life of Bess, one of the actors said, well, Time to go home, y'all. <laughs> mm. Did she sing? Was it also singing? Nope. Mm. Just it, and it, and it wasn't any words. It was total. It was total improv. A day in the life in in your bedroom, in the field. No words. It's just solo. Just just mm. what she did. The attention to detail. Mm. How she picked up a prop. How mm. she handled. How she moved her body through the through mm. the space. Mm. We were just riveted. It it was it was the quintessential. Okay, mm. now that, like like you know like the Buddha, 
you know, has spoken. It it was it was it was pure genius. And then someone whispered, "That's why she got seven tones." <laughs> <laughs> I had a classmate whom um, sadly died of AIDS, mm -hmm. um, and that was the height of AIDS. Of the AIDS epidemic. It was the height of it, but on. Um, I'm assuming you guys did the same thing. You had to do your audition piece in front of your whole class, like the first day or something like that. Of course. No, wait a minute. You mean at Juilliard? At Juilliard. We didn't do it in front of the whole class. We had to do it in front of the whole community. Oh, no, 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 You no. didn't have to do that? No, this was just your classmates. Oh, no, we did it with that first. Maybe that that was instituted when I came back as a faculty member. Yeah, no, yeah, we just no, did no. it in front we of We just in front of classmates, yeah. yeah. By the time I came back in the 90s to teach. for everybody? We did it in front of everybody. That's not nice or fair. <laughs> That's not fair. Okay, but go no. ahead. And Eric did um, Richard III, and he did um, Tom from The Dresser or something like that. Mm -hmm. He was The Dresser. Wow, this is, girl, this is going back. 40 years, oh, like yes. 30 years. 30 Thank you, yes, it is. 30 years, okay, yes. yeah. And you and, can remember. Well, because it was one of it those moments. That. Yeah. And I remember him doing that. I don't remember anybody else's audition. See. I mm -hmm. just remember his, and I remember saying to myself, oh, shit. <laughs> I got in on affirmative action. <laughs> because I should not be here. <laughs> Because yes, yes. I'm like, what, what the, <laughs> honey? Pack up, go home now. I thought he was Jesus. I really did. Wow. I really did. Wow. And you know, what? it's interesting. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's true. I don't know if he was well liked or not because he had this gallant mm. thing about him, mm. and the faculty loved him. <laughs> loved him. <laughs> but to think that he knew that he had AIDS during that time. Mm. It's astounding mm. to think now when I think back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was asked to come back. Two of us were asked to come back to talk to the senior class or the kids mm -hmm. at school. And Eric and I were the ones were the, invited were back. Were the ones who invited back. And I just remember thinking, oh my God. I still was in awe of him. And I remember after we got out of the class, and I also never, I never worked with Eric. I never Wait, was you friends. never did one scene with him the entire time he, you were there? He, homie was like, you know, platinum. <laughs> and also, <laughs> I have to say, nobody necessarily wanted to work with me. Now, that is, is Like is for shocking. league auditions? I, 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 and I, and I, no, no, no. Someone may say, Lisa, that's okay, that's not true, true. But I, I, the politics of any situation that you're in. Uh-huh. There's always the A team, the B team, and the C team. I always see it that way myself. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't. I think a lot of but, us, a lot of us do. But at school, yeah. the A team got all the roles all the time, all the time, all the time. Yes. And so you ended up. And leaving... I think that holds true if it's Juilliard, NYU, Yale, what for you sure. know, University they sort of, of pick Washington. Them. Yeah. They pick them. Yeah. 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 They say, okay, that one's gonna go. That one's gonna go. That one's gonna go. And that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. And so I never worked with Eric. Never just seen, I was never in his group. Wow. Ever, ever. And so just, just for the sake of, 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 of letting the audience know, when you said group, Juilliard broke the-, the Two classes, you were in two. Two classes, and, and, and then you, you have two sections, and then within those two sections, you would be broken down even smaller into right. like four right. sections, so that if they took in 20 people or 16 people, your voice and speech class would be four or five people exactly. at a time. Exactly. So you were never in a, in a group with him. I might have been in a, in, a, in, a, in a voice class with him, maybe, maybe. But so we finished the talk and um, I never thought Eric thought two cents about me. But and little he, did you know. Little did I know he came up to me afterwards. He said, I just want to tell you, I think I'm going to cry because he died not too long after. Wow, honey. And when I look at that, to think that that's that he took the time out to say, hey, you know, I love what you're doing and I've always admired your work. And I was like, oh, shit. Wow. This is from Eric Knutson. But yeah, we do all have those moments yeah. of artists that we see or. Yeah. And that's what it was like with, with Lloyd. Um, and it was, you know, these are really interesting people. I just, I remember watching Rocky Carroll and I didn't know who mm. he was from anyone. 
and Rocky had a hat. And the way that he played with that hat and his gestures and mm. how mm. you know how he played Lyman was just extraordinary. Mm. Mm. Extraordinary. Yes. Yeah. And to see Dutton and Epatha and just, The veterans. Yeah. 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 And I was the first company member to leave. Really? Because what? You got a show? No, because I needed to go. Wow. I needed to grow. I needed to do something. Really? You knew that? No, it was it was time to redo your contracts. Right. And I said to Lloyd, I think it's time. Wow. And he said, I think you're right. You need to go do some more. Go 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 do your stuff. Go fly. Then what'd you do? Because then I want to get to when I saw you I at did, the Manhattan Theater Club. I went on to do um Lady Hotspur. <gasps> Where? At, at, at the public. Oh, sweetheart. I jumped. You really did. You leapt. <laughs> wow. And I and this is one of those moments when I say I look back and think, who was that person? Yeah, because that's what you were saying about being fearless. I just I don't even I couldn't do that today. I Yes, you I, could. I, I said to myself, I don't want to be Dalt Sheet. That was what my audition was for. I said, well, I had to be the hoe. I don't understand that. <laughs> yep. And it was Joan Acolytus. Yes. Was she teaching at Juilliard when no, you were No, she was directing. She, she, was, she directing. was directing this production. Okay. Now, you, you go back. I may not be accurate in my timing, but I think that's what happened that I okay. went on to do Lady Hotspur. And um, parts one and two. And I walked into the audition, and I said, I'd like to do... Uh, Lady Hotspur. And he looked at the paper, but you're I said, I know, but I like to Lady Hotspur. And I, that's how I got that role. Uh, I auditioned for Lady Hotspur. And yes. then at the time, that was when Joseph was still alive, Joseph Papp. Yes. And he had to approve you. Of course. And he, and it's not like you were going to get it. But still, it was nerve-wracking. And I think it was in the Newman or wherever. Oh. And, he, and he walked in with his, you know, three-piece suit, you know, double-breasted or whatever. And, all right, Lady Hotspur, let's see what you're going to do today. Let's see this. And, you know, and then still getting it. Um, and that was a dream. That was a dream. Oh, my gosh. But that I'm was a time. I'm sitting here holding my breath. But times are different. Me. Times yes. are different. Mm -hmm. Because that's rare at the public now. Because off Broadway, Broadway, it's all about who you are. Mm. You used to be able to climb your way yes. at the public. Yeah. You could go from spear carrier to something, to something, to something. It's true. And you can't do that anymore. Yeah, it's the bottom line now, it's the money. It's, it's the, the money. It's the money. So I, as we were speaking about the timing of things, yes. I think the timing yeah. was well, you know, unique. when you look at the, the, the larger um, picture, there were national endowments for the arts. There, you, there was funding, you, you know, so you had the luxury as, you know, a nonprofit to put somebody in. Excellent and, point. Yeah, there was, there, was, there was government funding, which is dried up, completely dried And we up. weren't a starred studded cast at all. Um, Jared Harris, who was just off the boat, Aww. was Hotspur. Really? He was my hotspur. That's so wonderful. And another Juilliard alum who was doing really, really well. I can't think of his name. Tom something. I can't think of his name. I want to um, know when you booked the job to work with Athel Fugard. And tell tell them the name of the play and what this that was, a, was a play called Valley Song yes. by Athel Fugard. And many of Athel's plays were from his own experience. Many of South them were. African. South African white playwright. South white, African. White, a white South African, not a colored, a white South African, an Afrikaner, to be mm -hmm. exact. And um, I am open. I'll, I'll come out now. Okay. I do not sing. I do not dance, <laughs> not my forte. Like I was in the back when you had to do that tap thing routine at school. I, I was remember. In the back. I was in the back <laughs> trying to keep that foot going, not really doing it, not my forte. <laughs> and so 
It was to audition for Athel Fugard for a play about a 15-year-old girl yes. who sings. <laughs> I'm 30. And, and, they don't call, sing. and don't sing. And they've called me in. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> you played <laughs> for which you won an Obie I award. Did. Yes, I'll say my first. Yes, my yes. first Obie. Yes, and you know what was really crazy was um, there were real fifteen-year-olds there <laughs> at the audition. <laughs> at the audition, <laughs> and I just kept saying, "Why they set me up for this shit like this? <laughs> this is just embarrassing." <laughs> You know, they think I'm somebody's mother. And why am I here? And I was dating some knucklehead at the time who was an actor from North Carolina School of the Arts. And he said to me, don't do a, don't, you have to do a monologue. Mm -hmm. He said, don't do a monologue from a play. Don't, I'm telling you, don't do a monologue from a play. And I, I took his advice. I said, okay. He said, do something different. Do something different. I don't even know what I did. It was a poem. Wow. I can remember saying, seeing the artist walk in the door and bringing that je ne sais quoi mm -hmm. and saying, God, please let her be able to act. You know what I mean? You know please what? let him be able to act. Cameron Mannheim, uh, uh, who I adore, uh, said that to me once. She said, they are begging for you to be the, to be the part. Yeah. They're begging. They, yes. they, they, they really they want really you. Want they you. really want you. Yeah. They yeah. really, really want you to mm -hmm. be it. And so always... you walked in the door with a poem. Well, let me just say this. Okay. And that's probably why I didn't do such well in the Shakespeare class. <laughs> because I've always based my work on emotion. Mm. My work always comes from an emotional place. It mm. always comes from the, uh, what's the core of the human being. Mm. That's why. It is was that so where you start? Is that, that that's the, 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 that's where you go first discover and then everything else comes out of that just completely yep and so um so that's why jump 30 years um and meeting Bea Richards um which that's that's where she came from and she came from a very spiritual a, and also a technical place but also a very emotional place and her thing was to be what is it to be yes what is it to be not act yes. it, but to be, be it. the character. Yes. So I wasn't very good at Ionic Fraternator because I was just steadily trying to be. Yes. <laughs> and so I yeah. didn't always get the language right, but that's where I always came from. So I think in any of the work that I did, that's, and to this day, that's where I come from. Mm. What that allows me to do is to work not work getting jobs, mm. but to work in the process of being. So in some ways, there are those auditions and experiences where I just gotta be. Mm. Mm. So when I walk into an audition, and Wendell Pierce said this, he said, you know, an audition is like a one man show. You go up and down the same, and so it's, it's, you gotta give your best show, because you're not gonna open again tomorrow. You might, but it's probably right. not. So right. give it your best Open shot. Open and close. Open and close. In three minutes. Yep. Yeah. And so with that, I always took, okay, at an audition, I don't I don't socialize. I don't say, hey, girl, how you doing? I go, hey, I'm down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down the hallway. Um, just to kind of, to figure my being. Yes. And so however, whatever, um, in my audition process, in my... Sometimes I just bomb. I mean, let's, you know, <laughs> I'm not connected. I had a bad day, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But the, the the goal has always been to come from a being place. Mm -hmm. And I think that has carried me in the sense of wanting to tell the truth. And that has also gotten me into trouble, too, where I have questioned people. I have questioned directors. I have questioned writers. Yes. To say, well, that's not. I, one of my favorite stories from Athol and um, Cynthia Nixon's mom, who was an actress in her own right from Yale Drama School, mm. would come to, and I had befriended, oh, you know what? That's not true. Let me jump back. The first play I got, is that true? I don't know. It may not have been 
I think it was I think it was a late Hotspur. But anyway, Cynthia and I did a play in the nineties. Cynthia 90s. Nixon. Cynthia Nixon and I did a play. Juilliard as well. No, Brandeis. What? Wait, I thought Cynthia Nixon went to Juilliard. No, she never went to a performing arts school. Oh. Wow, yeah. okay. Never went to graduate school. Wow. Her mother went to Yale Drama School. Okay. But she did not. She said that Athel, thank you, that mm -hmm. Athel gave me the play. Ah. Oh. And he really did. And so what I loved about that experience with Athel is that I could oh. just play. I could do anything I wanted. Yes. Thing. That's what I saw I could just on do, that stage. I could just do anything, and I couldn't sing for a lick. <laughs> it didn't matter. I was singing Mariah Carey off tune and dancing with no rhythm, and nobody taught me and choreographed it. And they tried to give me singing lessons, bless them. You said, mm -mm. you're good. I'm good. <laughs> and more importantly, I had to try to get the dialect. Yes. And and um, Which you did Stunningly. Well, not in the beginning. I was a little Italian girl in what? the beginning. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And finally, duh, the the um because the character Atha was playing my grandfather, a colored grandfather, as well as a playwright, a white playwright. So it was a three character play with two characters. Mm. The dialect coaches, well, why'd you just listen to him? Why are you off somewhere else? Just copy him. I was like, oh duh. <laughs> Right. He's the real deal. I tell that story because at the end of the play, Veronica Yonkers, Veronica Yonkers is <laughs> supposed to say thank you. Uh -huh. That's the la her last line in the play, say thank you to the white playwright. And I said to Athel, what am I thanking him for? Mm. And you're saying this to the playwright, the actual director, director playwright, writer. writer. Right. Yes. And I was like, why am I thinking? Why is she? What did you, you do? And in many ways, that was where apartheid had, had taken many wow. people. Yes. That you should be grateful to me. Yes. Because I, I did something for you. I set you free. I said, but you didn't do that. Mm. Battle ensued. What? Battle. And he gave up. You mean he gave in? He gave in. He said, fine, just don't say it then. Don't say it. Don't say it. And I wouldn't say it. But but that's what I'm seeing. The truth. But that makes sense. You know? Well, yeah, the truth. And I said, it just doesn't feel right. I just don't know why. You didn't give me singing lessons, clearly. So what is it that you did for me? <laughs> you encouraged me? Okay, cool. Thank you for that encouragement. Mm -hmm. But what am I thanking you for? Mm-hmm. But it's it, it's interesting because when you really make that deep investigation of being, it all comes from that core. Like, I cannot say these words because it makes no sense. Or it's just not truthful. Right. It's just not truthful. And, you know, Bia's thing was, I don't care if you play a, you know, a prostitute, I don't care if you play a maid, whatever the role is, you must bring the truth to that. Thanks so much for spending time with us. Come back next week for part two. You want more? Find us on whatever podcast platform you use. Subscribe and leave us a review. Thanks a lot. See you next time.